Okay, here's a quick review for graphs of exponential and logarithmic functions. Uh, when we talk about exponential functions, we typically look at the uh, kind of parent graph or the parent equation, y equals a to the x, where a is a positive number not equal to 1. But if a is greater than 1, I mean, if, this is, if the base of this exponent is a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a 5 or something like that, the graph increases. It goes up from left to right. The domain for exponential are all real. The range for this particular exponential is just the positive numbers because, of course, any positive number raised to a power is a positive number. It can't be zero. It can't not cross the x-axis. In fact, the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. And it's continuous. There aren't any breaks or gaps or holes or, or anything like that. Now, if a is less than zero, or excuse me, less than one, I should say less than one, but still greater than zero, because it can't equal zero and it can't be a negative number, then it kind of does the reverse here in that it goes downward from left to right. That means it's decreasing. It still has the same uh, y-intercept, zero, one, zero, one here, and the domain and the range are the same as well. Uh, and it's continuous, and it has a vertical, uh, excuse me, a horizontal asymptote that, that is the x-axis. But it shows what we re sometimes refer to as exponential decay, and as the first one is exponential growth. Now, I wrote this out here because these are all the different kinds of transformations they might have. They might ask for a shift right or left. They might ask for a shift upward or downward. They, if b is negative, they might have you reflected in the x-axis, and of course, as b is like a number bigger than one, it's a vertical stretch between zero and one, it's a vertical shrink. So there's different things that they can do. I'm just gonna start first off by graphing uh, the most basic of all the exponential functions. The graph of y equals two to the x. Now, I didn't draw my axes in, that's my fault, but I did have graph paper at least, so that helps. So I'm gonna draw in my axes here. Now, you know the basic shape. You know a little bit about it because I gave you all that information here. Domain, range, all that kind of stuff. I would suggest that you make a t-chart on these exponentials. I would make a t-chart so that the numbers that I plug in for x, and I'm going to plug in for x, will make this exponent negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Those are really the simplest ones to pick. So I'm going to pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now you have to know something about what a negative exponent is because if you put negative two in there, you get y equals two to the negative two, that is one over two squared, that is one fourth, one fourth. And then, let me get a better pencil there, that one's falling apart on me. I, no, that one's falling apart on me, let me try another one here. It's not a Ticonderoga, but it'll work. Plug negative one in, I get y equals two to the negative one, which is one over two to the first, which is a half. Well, it doesn't work as, how, as good as the type of roger, though. If I get a 0 here, y equals 2 to the 0. Of course, any number other than 0 raised to the 0 power is 1. Plug in 2 to the 1st, that'd be 2. 2 to the 2nd, that'd be 4. And then you probably get enough of a, an idea of what's going on just from those five points. Now, again, I plugged in not because I wanted to hover it around 0, but I wanted this to hover around 0. I'm going to plug in numbers that get this really close to 0. I'll show you that in the next example in just a second. So if I graph these five points, negative 2, 1 fourth. Of course, I have to approximate. Negative 2, 1 half, 0, 1. There's my uh, y-intercept, 1, 2, and then 2, 4. And I remember enough from my parent graph. There's 2, and of course, it doesn't cross. It just comes really, really close to it. And that looks a little bit like the sample I gave you here going through 0, 1. But if you graph these five points, you should get enough of a curve, uh, enough to determine the curve, that you can make a nice, smooth, continuous curve going through those points. Now here, I've changed it. As you can see here, there's a 1 subtracted from the x, and that should tell you 1 to the right, and there's a minus 2 on the end that should tell you 2 down. So it's going to be the same graph shape because it's got the two, the base here, but it's gonna be shifted one to the right, two down. Now you could do that. You could take all five of these points and go uh, one to the right, 
two down and graph them that way. Or what I would suggest is you make a t-chart. Now when I make my t-chart this time, I want to plug in numbers that give me these five numbers. Well, to get a negative two, I'd have to plug in a negative one here. And then I would plug in a zero to get the negative one. And I would plug in a one to get the zero, the two, and the three accordingly. And so that when I plug these numbers in, this is going to give me y equals two to the negative one minus one minus two, which is two to the negative two minus two, which is one fourth minus two or negative one and three fourths. If I plug in zero, I get y equals two to the zero minus one minus two, which is two to the negative one minus two, which is a half minus two, which is negative one and a half. If I plug in one, I get y equals two to the one minus one minus two, which is two to the zero minus two, which is one minus two, which is negative one. If I plug in two, y equals two to the two minus one minus two. So that's uh, two to the first minus two, that's two minus two, that's zero. And if I plug in three, y equals two to the three minus one minus two. Plug in it right in there, that's two to uh, the second minus two. That's two squared minus two is two. And these are the five points that I would get from these five points if I move them one to the right, two down. So now I'm gonna uh, just put it right on here. I think I've got a red pencil somewhere. Yep, I still have it. So just for convenience sake, I'm gonna put my graph right on top of this one so that you can kind of see how the graphs are essentially the same, but there's, this one's been shifted to the right and been shifted down. So negative one, negative one and three fourths would be about here. Zero, negative one and a half. One, negative one, two, zero, and three, two. Now look at those five points, look at those five points. It's been shifted to the right, uh, to the right one and down to the right one and down two, excuse me. And so now I'm gonna just kind of graph it here. Now you can see where my y-intercept is. It's been shifted down. And my horizontal asymptote, oops, is now the line y equals negative two as compared to the x-axis, which is y equals zero. So that's this one right here. Now again, if you, re if you have this graph here, and they give you this, this equation here to graph, it's just a matter of shifting it to the right one and then down two. So you can graph those points like that. You can see my graph looks look pretty similar. All right, now the next guy up, I wanted to graph y equals the opposite of two to the x. Now again here, I wanna plug in numbers. Oh, I made this too big that make this negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Well, there's nothing added or subtracted, so I can just plug those in. Now, we know that when you plug in negative two, two to the negative two is one fourth, so this is negative one fourth. This will be negative one half. This will be negative one. This will be negative two. This will be negative four. So when I go to graph this, Now just as a reference point, although this is really poor graphing here, I'm gonna graph in, I'll do it in red here. I'm gonna graph y equals two to the x. That was the first one I did. So I have that one kind of memorized because it's one of the more popular ones. And the graph looks something like this. Oops, be careful if you use colored pencils. So what's gonna happen here? Negative two negative one fourth, negative one, negative one half. You see it's reflection in the x-axis. Uh, zero, negative one, one, negative two, two, negative four. And you can see what your graph looks like here. Well, I'm gonna to try to make it look halfway decent. So there's different kinds of transformations, but I think you'll be okay. If you can identify them, great. And if not, although it's time consuming, Create your table. When I'm, when I'm not sure what a graph looks like, I graph points. 
Okay, now, the next one that I wanted to go over is the uh, one with the logarithms. Now, here's some notes about logarithmic functions. Okay, remember, logarithmic functions, the first off, the graph of a logarithmic function and its corresponding exponential function, when I say corresponding, they're both base A, these are reflections of one another in the line y equals x because these are inverse functions. Remember, y equals x, right? So these are reflections of one another. So if you have like, for example, y equals two to the x, which I did the very first graph, then you could graph y equals the log base two of x by just reflecting it in this line. It's just a matter of interchanging the x's and the y's around. Now you can also convert a logarithmic equation if you had to in an exponential equation. Do you remember how y equals log base a, log base a of x if and only if a to the y equals x. So you can convert it into logarithm or exponential form and then make a t chart. But as you can see, I'm not going to plug in numbers for x. I'm going to plug in numbers for y. Probably negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And then I can graph those points, find the x values, graph those ordered pairs, and graph those and see if I can make a nice smooth curve. Remember what logarithmic functions typically look like for a greater than 1 and I think that's pretty much all you've had so far as far as graphs, is that uh, the domain and the range are just the opposite of the exponential functions, the domain of the positive, because you can't take the log of a negative. Now you can take the log of a number and it can be negative, but you can't take the log of a negative, you can't take the log of zero. So it's everything positive. Uh, the range though are all real numbers. You can see it's going to continue to climb, it just slows down. It drops off and takes on all sorts of negative values, but it's going to take its sweet time before it gets to some of the uh, larger y values. And it's increasing, as you can see. Uh, the y-axis is now a vertical asymptote, as before with the exponential, as the x-axis was horizontal, and it's continuous as well. So if I ask for you to graph, zip, zip, y equals log base 2 of x, well, I already have y equals 2 to the x here. All you'd have to do, oh, excuse me, you can't see that, can you? I already have y equals uh, 2 to the x right here in red. All you'd have to do is reflect it in this line, y equals x. Okay, Or you could change this into an exponential form. This is the base of your logarithm, so that's the base of the exponent, which is uh, the uh, 2 to the y is equal to x. Create a t-chart. Remember, a logarithm is just an exponent, so that's why the y is the exponent. Only this time, don't plug in numbers for x, because it'd be tough to solve. Plug in numbers for y, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Plug them in. We've done this a couple times now. That's going to be a fourth. That's going to be a half. That's going to be one. That's going to be two. And that's going to be four. So if I was to graph these points here onto my axes, all right, so one fourth, negative two. Make this worth one, and this is one. Uh, one half negative one, one zero, two one, and four two. Now, do you see how this graph here is reflected here? Let me actually let me just draw it in. Here's the line y equals x. Okay. And here's the graph for about the third time. Do you see how this graph in red, the original y equals two to the x, and this graph here in, uh, in uh, black, see how they're a reflection in the line y equals x? Well, not perfect because I can only freehand so well. All right. So if you need to, convert it to exponential form, plug in for y, some key values, find the x's, graph the points, and make a nice smooth curve. But you need to know the basic shape. Know the basic shape for the logarithmic equation.
All right? Okay. By the way, a lot of this is in your notes from sections 3.1 and 3.2. So be sure to look through the notes and look at the examples of the graphs. All right, now that I have this guy here, I'm going to try this guy here. Now I'm just picking these ones here because I already have the original graph. That's why it has the same base. I just want to show you it's 1 to the right, it's up 2. It's 1 to the right, up 2. So again, if I was to make a t-chart here, I would want to plug in numbers such that I would get, well, it's going to be a little bit more difficult here. I'd have to subtract 2 from both sides. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this very well. And then change it that x minus 1 is equal to uh, 2 to the y minus 2. So x is equal to 2 to the y minus 2 plus 1. So you would have to plug in numbers that would uh, give you negative 2, uh, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So I would have to plug in 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Because if I, oh, but in for the y. Good grief. Now, if this is messing you up, plugging them in this way, then just make sure that you take this graph, this one here, and move it one to the right, two up. So each one of these points, one to the right, two up. It'd be right there. One to the right, two up. One to the right, two up, and so on. So now if I plug in zero, I get zero minus, this is one fourth, plus one is one and one fourth. If I plug in one, I get one half plus one is one and a half. If I plug in two, I get one plus one, which is two. If I plug in uh, three for y, I get three minus one, that'd be two to the first, plus one is three. And then if I plug in four, I get four minus two is two, two squared is four plus one is five. So now I can graph this. So let's see, 1 and 1 fourth, 0, about here, uh, 1 and a half, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, that's kind of cool, no, 3, 3, that doesn't make sense, 3 minus 2 is 1, 3, 3, no, that cannot make sense. Oh, that's because I can't, I'm not following it here, let's try that again. One and a half, no, this is right. Two, two, there it is, two, two. Whew. Three, three, five, four. It does help if you do it right. And in this case, it looks like the line, the vertical line, x equal one, would be my vertical asymptote. That makes sense, because everything got shifted one to the right. All right, now, I don't know if I did more harm than good with this one, but I want you to look at this graph, and I want you to look at this graph here. In fact, let me put this, the first one, right on this paper. So it looked more like this. See how the graph, the graphs look the same, except that it's, Shifted one to the right and then up two. All right, now, what's the difference here? The difference here is that the negative out in front is going to reflect it in the x-axis. So the original graph, the one here in red, it's going to reflect it in the x-axis. Here, let me use a blue pen. Maybe you can see that. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see it a little bit. All right, so this one is reflected from the red one in the x-axis. So what happens is, all the all these uh, x values, or I should say, all these y values get changed around. All right, so let's see. Okay, um, I tell you, I'm just going to graph the one here in red. I'm not going to write out these points because I think I'll do you more harm than good. And then just reflect this. 
So like this one's below, now it's above. This one's below, now it's above. This one's right smack dab on. Uh, this one's below, now one above, one below, two above, two below. And there's my graph. Now I have some uh, graphs worked out for you on videos from before from sections one and two. Plus in my other pre-calculus videos, you can find, it's in chapter three, you can find some videos on graphing, exponential, and, and uh, logarithmic uh, functions as well. So take the time to look through this, and of course, if you have questions, uh, just give me a call and ask. Uh, study, study, study. Practice, practice, practice.